Halito, hello. I'm Chelsea Herr, Curator for Indigenous Art and Culture at Gilcrease Museum, where we are honored to feature the basketry of Eastern band Cherokee artist Shan Gosshorn. Her lasting impact as an artist, community member, historian, and friend will be featured in the upcoming exhibit, Weaving History into Art, the Enduring Legacy of Shan Gosshorn, opening at Gilcrease this fall. Gosshorn's work frequently addresses the complex and often fraught relationships between indigenous people and settler society. Her 2010 basket, Sealed Fate, Treaty of New Echota protest basket, displays one of the most poignant themes in her body of work, exploring how treaty making and nation to nation relations have affected the dispossession of indigenous lands. The basket's exterior splints which are long, thin pieces of material woven together to create the basket's form, are made of copies of the Treaty of New Echota, a contentious agreement between the U.S. government and a minority faction of Cherokee citizens. Signed in 1835, this disputed treaty ceded the tribe's lands east of the Mississippi River and initiated the removal of over 15,000 Cherokee citizens to Indian Territory in 1838. The lid of Sealed Fate features a man in a coffin design. Gosshorn used splints bearing the signature of Andrew Jackson, the American president responsible for the harrowing forced removals of tribes from their southeastern homelands to Indian Territory. Inside the basket, Gosshorn used splints made of a 95-page petition signed by Cherokee citizens protesting the validity of the Treaty of New Echota. Several of these petitions were signed throughout Cherokee country, and most of them implore Congress to withhold their ratification of the Treaty of New Echota due to the questionable nature of the treaty signing and the purported Cherokee leaders who attended the summit. Gosshorn's Golden Values Basket also features the Treaty of New Echota protest document, but the majority of the text shows the artist's handwritten transcription of the Cherokee Morning Song using the Cherokee syllabary. This work refers to one of the precipitating factors of Cherokee removal from their ancestral homelands, the Georgia Gold Rush. In 1829, gold was discovered in northern Georgia, and the rapid influx of settler prospectors into Cherokee territory became known as the Great Intrusion. Increasing conflicts over land and resource rights soon led to the dispossession of Cherokee lands in the interest of non-Cherokee peoples. Regarding this basket, Gosshorn has said, quote, Indian people place their connection to their ancestral motherland above everything else while the dominant white culture idolizes the almighty dollar. This basket is a comment on the conflicting value that land holds among different people. Golden Values also includes segments of the Indian Removal Act, which was enacted by Congress and signed by President Jackson in 1830. This act originated the series of mass forced removals of southeastern tribes to reserved lands west of the Mississippi. A driving force in this legislation was the desire to dispossess natives of their lands for the purposes of resource extraction, agricultural and industrial development, and non-native settlement. As a result, circumspect agreements like the Treaty of New Echota became more common. Issues regarding tribal lands, sovereignty, and governance continue to inform the relationships between indigenous peoples and the federal government today. In fact, on July 9th, the U.S. Supreme Court reaffirmed the sovereign rights of a number of tribes right here in Oklahoma. The decision in the McGirt v. Oklahoma case asserted that Congress, which is the only governmental body with the plenary power to deal with tribes, never formally disestablished reservations in Oklahoma prior to statehood in 1907. When Gosshorn drew upon significant historical documents, such as the Treaty of New Echota and the resulting protests sent to Congress, she did not simply refer to past events that are separated from our current lives. Rather, 
she interwove the ongoing realities of Native peoples, which are intimately tied to and still shaped by Native histories. Thank you for joining me in this exploration of Shan Gosshorn's artistry and her commitment to illuminating Indigenous histories, especially those related to treaty making and land dispossession. For more information about Cherokee history and Native treaties, please visit our online collections at gilcrease.org and keep an eye out for more digital content related to Shan Gosshorn's basketry.